Hello everyone, my name is LaFox. This is going to be a comparison on the GP2 Win 2 prototype versus the GP2 Win 2 retail edition. I got the prototype late December and this retail unit I got about a week ago, so mid-June. I've been using this retail version for about a week now and there are a lot of considerable quality, quality of life improvements. Um, one thing that I find a bit concerning for my prototype is that I am missing this grounding shield right here that is was listed as one of the faults for why SSDs will eventually fail. Um, I get kind of worried about that because I don't want to like burn through a bunch of SSDs on this prototype unit. I will continue to use my prototype, but I think I'm going to largely go over to my retail unit. Having said that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the differences very quickly. You can see what I mean by the, this is the retail shell, the retail bottom shell. And you can see right here that there is this metal bridge that kind of connects the ears. And this is some kept on tape. And then there's a little little part right here that kind of springs and that is not present at all on my prototype so we can kind of just like eye these up and look at them side by side we can see that the trigger buttons are largely the same so those are those remain the same but there are enough little differences so right here there's this plastic spreader uh, spacer right here and that is not present on mine. Additionally, there are some rubber pads here and I guess that's to minimize noise or help with cushioning. Um, I guess there's like little things that they noticed, but those are the types of things that I'm talking about in terms of quality of life improvements. There's lots of little little details all around that kind of culminate into a, a, a big difference. Even though I still like my retail unit, um, there are some things that are stand out. One of the screws came out of here. I will put that on the side. So one of the things that people did not like, uh, they considered a downgrade. You can see it right here on my prototype unit. I have this rubber pad. It's on both sides of the shell. Um, a lot of people wanted this as opposed to just this plastic. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, I like it as well, but it's not, it's not that huge of a deal that it's not present on the retail units. Um, I just use it as a visual indicator very quickly for me to see which one is my prototype versus which one is my retail unit. Um, I do remember there being one that had like a dimpled surface for this plastic, but that looks like that, even that doesn't exist anymore. So now it's just flat plastic. Um, so that's it for the bottom shells mostly. If we kind of dig in deeper to the PCB and the layout, you can see that there are a lot of changes. Um, so very quickly, here's my prototype, and you can see that the battery is kind of just kind of messed up a little bit versus this one that seems far more official. Uh, additionally, there is a screw, hold, there's two screws holding down the battery where mine did not have them. Uh, I am also still missing that screw on my heatsink versus that, that screw now being present. I haven't opened up my heatsink. I didn't really see any purpose to it. Additionally, if you look at the fan, there's this rubber mask that they applied over it and that is not present on this fan at all but even just the PCB itself it's a, a black color versus the green PCB color and also just look at the VRMs and all the the resistors and uh, capacitors on it it's just almost entirely different um, the ITE chips look pretty identical some of the things were getting kind of shielded that we can't see uh, because of this tape right here that is hiding that chip it looks like um, but even still you can see that there is a lot of difference in terms of the VRMs and stuff like look at the spacing of of this versus here it's pretty apparent that a lot of changes were made and then of course obviously the the shielding and if we go here oh so this part touches I see okay so this part this metal part that connects here that metal also makes contact with the metal of the USB-A port so I guess that is connecting this so that the USB-A port is grounded as well um, so like little things like that that are very very apparent when you start looking at them uh, very quickly we'll go ahead and take a look at the PCB again you can see like there's little little copper traces going around to fix I guess things that were necessary later on additionally you can see like here's one of my uh here's just a blob of solder connected to this uh wi-fi antenna and then the other antenna gets soldered over here uh versus how the wi-fi antennas are routed uh it is now going up yonder and disappears 
right? I don't see anything happening right there. And there's this tape coming down. Yeah, fix that better. And then right oh, it looks like the Wi-Fi actually goes right here and right here. So it's like just solder blobs right there and right there. Seems like if where your hand placement would be, that's not super ideal. But uh, just so that you guys can know, move these things down. Uh, when you're trying to get the best Wi-Fi signal, just be aware that it's on the left and right side. Uh, the battery looks significantly better. Also, there is this little blob here that kind of keeps them together. Just a lot of nice little little changes and stuff. But we'll go ahead and start powering them up and take a look at some other differences, like the bio screens are different now. Uh, additionally, um, there are some little details that have to do with the MIPI to e-display, the EDP. So um, these screens are MIPI displays. They are for mobile displays that were converted to work for this. They are portrait style, but are being presented to us in landscape, but they are MIPI displays. So there is a MIPI to e-display, EDP, uh, embedded display port. That on my prototype is sort of broken and I'll, sh I'll demo a game what that looks like and why it was kind of hard for me to demo a few games because uh, a lot of people were telling me to run things at lower resolutions, but I was just physically incapable of doing so because of the uh, MIPI to the E display and I'll show you that in a moment. So give me a second. I'm going to kind of put these guys back together and we'll go to the next step. Alrighty, so actually one other thing that I did want to mention is, uh, so I've already gone ahead and bought a Transcend drive that b &H Photo now had sane prices on. But one of the things that is nice is, again, another quality of life improvement when installing these SSDs is, if I can get it right, right there. Okay. Uh, you can see that it kind of will force the SSD up automatically. So if you press it down, it comes right back up and that is not present on the prototype at all oh, pardon my dogs are barking at intruders let's go ahead and get that in there all right so that's how that sits now so it just sits flush versus this kind of having an auto eject and that's how really you're supposed to be putting it in and you go in at an angle and then you close it so that's just another little thing that is different between the retail versus the prototype all right continuing along additionally there was one other change this was a uh a criticism of linus was that he didn't like that it defaulted to two different pivots on the screen itself so instead gpd has opted to uh, increase the tension of this and you very it's it's easier to demonstrate when you're actually opening it there's a lot of tension to this but you can see that there is no pivot until it gets to 180 degrees and then it locks so that is the only thing that is different it's easier to kind of bend into a location that's like this versus it's almost impossible on my prototype because it wants to lock between the two different positions and you can't really get it in between that because it'll kind of want to snap between both all right so let's go ahead and power them on so that we can see the two different different logos go ahead and power them on you can see that this has just the newer gpd logo and this is the old gpd gamepad digital so it's a lot cleaner i much prefer this one uh, something that's going to be very apparent to see is the light leakage that happens here. Let me go ahead and get a better example of this. So I had to temporarily just disable the lights, but you can actually see right in here, there is this light leakage that is happening. And that was largely because these screens were hand assembled versus this was this display was made in a factory. So there is no there is no present light leakage at all like when you look at it from any angle there isn't this um because this isn't sealed this isn't glued all the way down you can see that band of light that happens right here and largely it's not super noticeable it's much more noticeable in person but it's not that huge of a deal but again quality of life improvements so i'm gonna go ahead and load up a game and show you what that looks like when playing so let me go ahead and fix these lights as well oh uh, Okay, so now we're back, and oh, my dogs are barking. All right, so here's a game that will play just fine on retail units. We'll go ahead and just say yes to this, go play. And what happens, what happens on my prototype is um, basically a gigantic mess. 
and you can also still hear the sound popping on my prototype. So you can see the Sega screen here loads fine, and then when the game loads here, that's what I get. So anytime that, the reason that that happens is because of the MIPI to E uh, embedded display port. This was an, um, a pre-release version, it's one of the prototypes, is basically when they just started getting that uh, MIPI to embedded display port adapter working and one of the things that it fails at is it basically only does 1280 by 720 versus uh, the retail one works perfectly fine. So um, that's it. There's a lot of quality of life insurances. This unit, my prototype is still really good to me, uh, but largely I think I'm going to go ahead and move over to the retail edition. There's just a lot of, a lot of nicer things to it. So um, that's it. Hopefully this video was informative. Thank you so much for watching.